Welcome back to On Right Podcast here. You have Elijah alongside Grant. Uh, we're going to do a deep dive into uh, the Lions draft. That's the first uh, four picks that they have, which is the second, 32nd, 34th, and 66th pick, respectively. Uh, we, we're just going to give a handful of players that we think they should try to target um, that should be available at those um, picks. Kind of give a you know quick blob about each player and uh, you know our opinion to go from there. And at the end, uh, a couple of draft sleepers that we might be able to clean up and uh, you know make a real um, a diamond in the rough. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <clears throat> you hit it right on the head. My fault. Oh, no, no, I was just saying you hit it right on the head. I mean, really, just kind of diving in. You know, um, the real thing is gonna you know about eight days out from the uh, the actual draft, so. I thought it'd just be cool. It'd be fun to kind of talk through potential scenarios, you know, um, maybe trading like Taylor Decker, trying to get a couple picks, trading back, things along those lines. Um, I think we're just going to, you know, touch on where we're at currently and, uh, you know, just see what the picks, like how we can best utilize, how we think the Lions should best utilize the picks we are, we're sitting at now currently. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, I think kind of start things off. I'll let you go ahead and take the lead on this, E. Um, Second overall pick, you know, to give me, you know, two or three people that you, you know, like for them to get, you know, they're targeting, and we'll kind of start from there. Yeah, no, so um, right off rip, I would say if I – and I'm doing all this as if I was the GM and I was taking over effective immediately. I would trade that pick back. Um, I think yeah. I think at that moment there are definitely good, solid players in there. Um, <laughs> but I personally would trade that pick back, especially – considering that uh, Hutchinson is probably going to be off the board. Um, yeah. My view is the best, hands down, best player in this draft. Um, so I would start out by saying I would trade back. Um, I would have personally tried to hype up a couple of those quarterbacks, at least yeah. bring them in for interviews, make them seem like you're somewhat interested in that. And then I would try to flip that to get a couple more picks because we're currently at a place where more than likely one player is not going to be the deciding factor of whether we're uh, you know on a playoff hunt or not. Yep. If we can land two or three additional starters for that one pick, I think that's kind of the boat we need to be in. So I want to start out by saying that. Yeah. Well, let's say we're going with a player. Um, uh, if Hutchinson is available, we have to take him. Yep. Um, I think that is um, – I, I pray that they mess that pick up and, and you know, and, and draft somebody else. That's the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, if they let him fall into our lap, I mean, he's born and, born and raised in Michigan, went to the University of Michigan, got the first Big Ten title in 20 years or so. Um, his dad uh, is an NFL, former NFL player, uh, great Big Ten player while he was there as well. So I think, you know, he comes he has that pedigree. He's yep. proven he's willing to put the work in and get better. Um, so I think that is hands down uh, the best pick. Outside of there, I don't really want to touch anybody else. Um, if we absolutely had to, I guess I would prefer Thibodeau over Hamilton. Yeah. Or, um, yeah, but that's kind of what I'm going going with. Thibodeau as I really don't want him, but I could deal with that. Yeah. Hamilton, I don't think we should take, and we shouldn't touch any of those quarterbacks. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a, <clears throat> that's a good call. I mean, I agree with that. I, I do kind of feel like right now we're in a rock and a hard place. I know you and I talked quite a bit about, you know, how that last win at the end of the year kind of put us in this spot now to where it's like, okay, you know, obviously we can take the best available player, you know, after whoever they decide to take at first overall, but like the best available player is also, I mean, you got a couple old linemen that are in the mix. You got Thibodeau that, you know, we kind of heard him just kind of, you know, pop it off of the mouth by a lot of different things, you know, up to, up to the draft. So it's like, it is really tough. I mean, I think to kind of take, you know, what you said, if I was the GM, um, you know, what I would probably do is either trade that pick or depending on who Jacksonville gets, you know, I'd probably be okay with them taking like a um, an Evan Neal or Iki Iguanu and trying to trade Decker. Yep. So it's like, okay, we got like, you know, we got the best, um, one of the best tackles in the draft, you know, don't have to, you know, worry about like the contract that Decker has. Like, and I think it'd be valuable if we were able to try to find a way to get off of his contract, kind of start fresh, just like a new, pretty much retooled O-line overall and um, kind of keep it pushing from there. But like you said, you know, if uh, <clears throat> if Hutchinson, you know, he does fall to us, I think that's like a no-brainer, you know, especially for a team that was like last in sacks um, last year, you know, last in def total defense for the most part. I think they might have been like 25th in total defense to finish the season, but they are pretty bad, um, you know, pretty much from uh, top to bottom on the defensive side of the ball. 
Um, I think they did a decent job of, you know, sharing up the secondary, um, you know, sharing up, you know, got a couple linebackers uh, that are coming in. Um, but I think uh, the biggest, the biggest thing we need to address would be the D line. So but other than that, I mean, I think, you know, if Hutchinson is not available and, you know, that's just a pick and what it is and who we're going to get, I mean, I think it'd be, you know, I'd probably tip it out. I mean, I think I'd be, I wouldn't be happy with it. It would just be one of those situations where it's like, we know we need somebody coming off that edge. We need somebody putting pressure on, you know, Aaron Rodgers, Kirk Cousins, Justin Fields, you know, the whole rest of the NFL to give ourselves a fighting chance week in and week out. So um, I would say, you know, Hutchinson, if he's there for sure. Um, Neil or Iquanu, if they kind of plan on doing something with Decker, which I've heard, you know, heard a little bit here and there, or, you know, Thibodeau. But I can't really, you know, getting like uh, Hamilton or uh, anybody along those lines, maybe even Jerron Walker, that might be somebody that could kind of, you know, that might kind of surprise everybody that we could also take a peek at as well. But other than that, um, kind of between a rock and a hard place. And I do honestly hope they do trade that pick and trade back a little bit. Yeah. No, I think that's the best thing we can do at this current moment. Like you said, um, Hutchinson is the difference maker. Yep. Um, Evan Neal would be a difference maker. And some of these other guys just might be guys. Like yep. they, they, there might be solid. I'm not going to say that Thibodeau won't be a good, maybe solid seven, eight, 10 year starter in the league, but are, is it worth ballot of the second pick? Are you, know, are you getting a guy that's going to be a, a franchise difference maker? That is really – if that's what it is. And if you're not – if you can't get one guy to do that, then you need to flip that for three or four pretty good guys. Yeah. That's, that's kind of my – yeah, so I think we're on the same page with that. Um, I think if we can get off Decker, obviously he's good and still has gas in the tank left. Uh, mm -hmm. But if we can get off him before that becomes an issue and slide in a great young tackle, I think that's a win-win. I think yeah. we keep that line fresh and we do right by him. Uh, as far as not cutting him in two years after we wasted the rest of his career or not cutting him yeah. um, where he loses money or whatever, just kind of a win-win for both parties, all three parties, if you consider the player getting drafted. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Uh, with, with 32nd pick, um, I'm going to try to address the other, um, uh, a, a couple other needs that we have. Um, yep. Jordan Davis, if he's a uh, big tackle from Georgia, if he's available there, I, I've seen him. It's kind of hard to tie down where. I think if a team yeah. falls in love with him, he could go before this. Uh, but it seems like it's definitely possible for him to still be uh, still be available or in that mix around 32. Yeah. Um, I've literally seen anywhere from like 15 to like 45. So it's a big, big range for him. But I feel very confident that he could anchor your line, um, uh, especially if you're going to go get a Hutchinson in that first round pick. I mean, you – yeah. You're, looking, you're looking phenomenal moving forward from there. Uh, another person I have is uh, Andrew Booth. That's a junior. That is a cornerback from Clemson. Yep. Um, I think they've, they've proven that they can put out good um, good defensive players. Uh, they have a good, good solid program there, and uh, they're constantly producing dif difference makers in NFL. Um, uh, pretty solid uh, conference. Yep. Uh, he's about six foot. Looks like he can play the ball pretty well. Uh, good speed. That's, that's a guy. Um, and the, yeah, those are the two picks that I have for uh, uh, 30 second pick. Okay. Yeah, no, I like those. I mean, I think, <clears throat> yeah, just addressing, you know, more of the things on defense. And it is interesting. I mean, I think that guy Davis, I mean, I feel like he, you said he's seen him from like 15 to 45. I mean, I feel like I saw him in, you know, the top 10, a couple of different places here and there. And, you know, he's, I mean, it's well scares people like 360 pounds. That, yeah. you know, you know, are you Albert Hainsworth? You know, or are you? Uh, right. you know, so I think that's kind of the 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 fear of yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, definitely gonna be one of them guys. Where it's like monitor what he's eating. You know, just trying to keep him in shape as much as you can because he he's more like a one to two down lineman kind of guy. But you want him, you probably want him to be more of that three, you know, three down lineman kind of guy to where, you know, he's actually out there and it's kind of tough just having somebody that gets gassed and, you know, might always be available as much as you need him to be. So, you know, you definitely don't want to catch his big ass on the field in a no, in a, in a uh, yeah, no huddle. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> it's bad news. But uh, yeah, the 30 second pick for me, I mean, I think, uh, you know, even though we were to you know, able to grab a couple guys in free agency um, and it's for the secondary, I still think, it, you know, it's good to um, grab a couple guys that, you know, can at least like, put some pressure on them, that guys, you know, like splitting time. I think as a franchise, I don't think anybody except for like a certain few individuals have like their spot. You know what I'm saying? I think we're kind of in a situation where it's like, obviously we're building, but it's like, we need to kind of create more competition within, 
like, you know, on the team in order to, I think, maximize, you know, like the team's potential overall. So, I mean, I have a couple guys I'm looking at that, you know, that <clears throat> side of things is Lewis Sign, the safety from Georgia. Um, you know, I looked him up a little bit. I think I've, I've seen that he can, you know, he can play a little corner. You know, you, you're going to end up having a lot of packages where you got five DBs on the field. So it doesn't always hurt to have, like, your starting four and then, like, one or two or three guys that, you know, can kind of rotate in and play the nickel, you know, play in the slot, you know, play safety here and there, or rover, you know, where it kind of looks like for their defense. And, I mean, that was a guy that, like, has made Michigan look, you know, like look like they were playing kindergarten. I mean, I don't know, he just looked, looked great against Michigan, looked great in the championship game, played in the SEC, you know, not really much to, you know, you don't really have to make much of a case for him. Um, another guy I have is one of the hometown guys, Dax Hill. I mean, I've definitely seen his name come up quite a bit in that, like, you know, 25, 29, like 30, you know, 33, 34, 35 range as far as where he might be going. Um, we, you know, he was in uh, Detroit's backyard. I mean, we watched him, you know, definitely not scared to come hit people. Um, I like him because he can cover tight ends like pretty well and he can, you know, they can match him up with a Kelsey or match him up with a Waller and, you know, he can maybe like develop into that down the road to where he's just kind of like a, you know, bigger, like in the box, more type safety, but he can also have some solid cover skills to be able to sit on them bigger receivers. You know, if we, you know, that's something I think we could definitely use and be valuable, especially in the league today. Um, and then uh, another guy is a uh, Kair Elam. Um, he's, you know, another cornerback, you know, safety, um, DB from Florida, I just say. Um, SEC guy, like I said, SEC guys, I mean, you don't really have to tell me a whole lot, you know. I just. Yeah, best competition every week. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're, you wouldn't even, if you were bad, you wouldn't even been on the field. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, yeah, they're not. Yep. What I like about all three of these safeties is just like, you're just bona fide, you know, to come hit you in the face. You know, they can cover, um, just very, you know, aggressive like individuals in the secondary. And I feel like that's what you need, especially in this league now where it's literally like a, a track meet. Like every game is a wow. track meet. It's everybody, four receiver sets, stop it if you can. So I think that's uh, definitely uh, something that they could uh, address at that uh, pick for sure. 100%. So the Lewis, Lewis Shine, um, I, I had him for my uh, 34th pick. So I, I'm, I think right there in that ball, I think he's good. I remember he stood out to me in that, in that, um, play in the college football playoff as well. Um, yeah. And obviously playing Alabama the following week, um, it just stood out to me a lot. So I watched a little bit of his tape, maybe like a little two minute highlight tape today. And um, I mean, I, there's not a whole lot more you could want to see. So I definitely second that him, that pick as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so moving forward with just with the 34th pick, I think, you know, it's an interesting spot to be in having those basically almost back-to-back -back picks. Um, uh, as long as you, the guy you fall in love with don't get snagged in between, you know, you're kind of, you're doing, you're, you're doing pretty well. So yeah. um, I, uh, I switched it up a little bit on this one. Um, I have Sky Moore, which is a Western Michigan uh, receiver. Yeah. I know we have to get, uh, you know, we have to get more explosive on the offense. The first two picks, I went defense. Uh, so this would kind of be to open it up a little bit, uh, you know, get a, a crime and uh, a partner in crime for uh, St. Brown and yep. just kind of, I watched his highlight tape today. I'm not going to act like I knew who he was uh, a couple of weeks ago even, uh, but I watched his highlight tape. He looks very good. Uh, he had 1,300 yards, 95 catches, 10 touchdowns. Um, he just looked very solid. I looked at some of his stats for some of the Power 5 teams. He showed out mm -hmm. in those games as well. Um, so I kind of think, uh, in particular, you always find a phenomenal receiver somewhere in that, like, this ballpark. You know, yep. and right off the first round, heading into, you know, like, that 30 to 60 is where you find a lot of them T.O.'s, uh, Tariq Hills, those type of guys that uh, may have didn't go to the biggest schools, maybe didn't have whatever, whatever, um, but they're, they're, they're available in those ranges. So I think that's where you get um, a phenomenal uh, pick for where you're at. So that's one of the first guys I like. Definitely think you should look them up. I have uh, – and then lastly, because I, I have um, the corner – my second – or my third one on this one – will be uh, uh, Quay Walker from Alabama, uh, from Georgia, another linebacker. I think if we were to do that, that is um, just shoring up that defense. Like you said, there's a track meet every week, um, getting versatile guys. Um, I mean, you're if you have the worst offense in the world and the best defense, you're probably still going to eight and eight. So I think yep. that's kind of the, the mindset I think we should have. Um, it's just that you won't be to score on us, I guess. So mm -hmm. that, those are the three players I kind of like at this 
this time. Um, I definitely think this is where you could get a, a, a receiver, a value receiver, and uh, and be able to do something. And maybe maybe have another special special player on your hands like St. Brown. Yep. And he was probably taken there in that thirty to sixty range. He yeah. Who do you think? Who do you think? I said St. Brown was probably taken there in that thirty to sixty range last year. You know? Yeah, I think yeah. if I'm not. Yeah, at least second, third, late second, early third, something like that. Yeah. No, those are – oh, good call on all of those. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much in the same ballpark as you um, with that 34th pick. So, for me, I, I like N'Kobe Dean. Yeah. You know, if he's there, I don't think he will be. But I think, like – so my thought process is, like, if the guy like him is there, I think we should definitely look at him. If he's not, then I feel like, you know, we got to just kind of prepare this offense – for that next uh, individual at quarterback that's going to come in, you know, next year, you know, whatever that kind of looks like. So I went with um, either John Mechie or Christian Watson. Um, John Mechie, I mean, I feel like, you know, he probably would have been a first rounder. Uh, he tore his ACL back in like December. ACLs don't really scare me anymore, how they used to, you know, kind of scare, you know, yeah. like you know me or like anybody else as far as just like, the, you know, coming back from them. Um, I mean, his teammate, James Williams, tore his and like, late January, and they're already saying he's going to be ready to go pretty much the start of the season. He's probably still going to be a top 10 pick. So I feel like Mechie, I mean, he's one of those guys, he's he's kind of like your, um, kind of like uh, St. Brown in a sense, but I just like, you know, that Bama pedigree, you know, like a possession receiver, tough. You know, I think it's just important for us to try to load up on as much talent for how cheap, you know, in a, in a cheap way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think we – you know, I'm glad that we got DJ Shark and didn't pay him a whole bunch of money. You know, I'm glad we're not – we don't have any receivers with these big, like, 25 million a year type deals. Um, and I, But, like, with that being said, I feel like we do have to, you know, address, try to grab a receiver early just because a lot of these other receivers are going to go top 15, top 25 just because a lot of these teams don't want to have to get in a situation where they feel like they need to pay a player a ton of money, you know, a couple years from now. They'd rather have a kid on a rookie contract than then – my other guy I think will be a good a good pick here is Christian Watson. I was able to watch some film from him, you know, the Senior Bowl. Um, he's a small school guy, North Dakota State. I mean, they got some players in the league. You know, we know who they are. You know, they definitely – I think they got the respect that they um, deserve for being, you know, just one of those very quality 1AA type teams. Um, 6'4", 210, you know. Uh, yeah, actually, he's on my list too, actually. Yeah, great hands. I mean, he can run. Um, I just like them guys where it's – you, you, you don't feel too, like, bad about, like, kind of, like, taking a shot on a guy like this because, you know, a lot of these kids nowadays, I mean, they're they're playing in seven-on-sevens from, like, eighth, ninth grade on. I mean, I you know, I feel like it's, you know, it's kind of easy for them to – like, they're like puzzle pieces at this point. Plug them in. They can catch 50, 60, 70 balls, five, 600 yards, eight, nine touchdowns, you know, three, four, five touchdowns. Like, that's a win is, is if you can get a guy to come in and kind of give you that type of production, especially at – the 34th pick in my opinion no I agree it's crazy um so I'm not if you have another pick I'm not gonna talk too much but um oh, yeah, was- no, so um I have him on my list too so I I there's just another one of those players that I've seen in a very wide range yep. of of where so he, he keep one of them guys that a team fall in love with and take you know like you say with the 34th pick or I could see him lingering around for a while yeah uh, due to d- different things so I do I do think that it depends on if if those receivers start flying off the board Right, he'll clearly move up because out out of need and desperation. But um, like if Drake goes nine or Drake London goes nine, like it's the floodgates roll. Yeah, yeah, you know. no, I agree. Um, so no, it's funny you had him on there. So yeah, good deal. And uh, were you down thirty fourth? Yeah, that was uh, that was it. Just I, no, I, I, like, I like those. Um, I like those lot. So I think those Alabama receivers, like you said, that I think that's as close to you know plug and chug as you can. You know, as far as like he there, I imagine. I mean, do any of the Alabama receivers not work out? So I just feel like um, they're, yeah. yeah. It's not like the running backs where they do, they kind of fizz out, I guess. But these re- the receivers seem to be um, re- NFL ready. So yeah. every year, four of them are coming out. Ridley, so, uh, Judy, I mean, Julio kind of started it. You know, Cooper. I mean, it's I'm sure there's a couple guys peppered in there that was kind of like maybe maybe kind of late round that we're just not thinking of. But yeah. Yeah. All. Like you said, still kicked off with Julio Jones back in what 2010 or something. So yeah, I mean every year mm-hmm. they're um, they're very deep at that position. So uh, yep. yeah, no, I agree. And uh, so moving forward, just the picks with the 66 pick. Um, this be the first 
pick I think where maybe possibly we don't get a starter out of this or we shouldn't get a starter out of this, but like it still yeah. should be a solid contributing player, a guy that we see around that's on the team, um, you know, making, making contributions. Yeah. Um, so the guys I have on there, uh, I actually have uh, Christian Watson. I uh, guess I'll start with him on there. If he's there, you have to take him. You have him moving up 30 spots sooner than that, so that kind of puts me hesitation on on him even being available, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I do think that guy I – think, I think he's going to be very good. Um, I haven't uh, – if we don't get a safety, one of the earlier picks, I have a, a, a Tennessee receiver safety. His name is Alante Taylor. Uh, like you said, another SEC kid. Kind of goes to a school that was more or less beat up, but I don't know if that's the worst thing in the world as far as he's uh, he's obviously been put in um, bad situations. And sometimes, I guess, if you're used to that, then it might not be such a bad thing to come to the Lions. If you've ever been on Alabama <laughs> and then you're going to the Lions, that's a, that's a, a culture shock. Yeah. Not to say that we don't need to draft kid, players to change the culture, but I yeah. would say um, – I'm not only going to run to the SEC schools that get 12 wins a year. I think there's very good talent throughout that league. He's having to stop players like the Alabama receivers every week. Um, so I, I, his name is Lante Taylor. I think he'll definitely be there around, around that ballpark. Mm -hmm. uh, another guy, and I already forgot his name. We talked about it before this, but his name is uh, Daniel uh, Falafel. Falafel, Falafel from, uh, from, yeah, I was going to butcher it either way. I forgot it halfway through. Um, from Minnesota. I mean, I think he's a – I mean, if you're in the Big Ten, you know this, man. You know, I think he's the biggest tackle to probably ever play in the Big Ten. Um, that does somewhat scare me a little bit, but he wasn't entirely abused. He's not uh, he's not a overly slow. He's not – you know, he's, he was playing players like Hutchinson and Ajabo and whoever else might have been throughout the league uh, over the last four years. Um, so I, I think he's coming to play. And if he's there, regardless if he's the biggest man in the world, um, I think – he could be very solid, especially in like fourth round, somewhat project type player where, um, yeah, he might need to work on a couple of things, footwork or uh, strength or whatever the case may be. But I think a couple of years from now, he could, he could be on your line, help anchor that. Um, so that's a guy that I'm kind of interested in. And um, yeah, I like that. Cause like, you know, kind of going back to them potentially trading Decker. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, if this is somebody they potentially just love, you know what I'm saying? Whether they grab him like, you know, it may, it may not early second, but it's like if it is coming like you know day two, day three, and he's available, and you're kind of like, all right. I mean, we can get off deck. We can get off Decker for like a future second round pick, or you know maybe like another pick in this draft, or two picks in this draft, some along those lines. I wouldn't be mad at it. I just I love the fact that we because we could do like that and then throw Sewell at left tackle, yeah, and then kind of just you know take the pressure off of this guy because I'm pretty sure he played left tackle in Minnesota. Yeah. You did. So I, I just looked it up in the combine. He was six nine three seventy nine. That's crazy. <laughs> so that's a that's a behemoth. But yeah. uh, I think I think in this type of uh, range is where you would take uh, a flyer on somebody like that. Yep. A flyer on a, a, a Christian Watson or somebody where you're going to roll the dice, high risk, high reward. Uh, you don't roll the dice earlier in the draft. This is when you try to do that. So, yep, I agree. Yeah, um, my sixty six picks or who I think they should, you know, could target um, at 66. Um, so I got this guy named Darian Beaver. So he played for Cincinnati, um, and they had, like, a top five defense. And I think for me, like, you know, was kind of just looking at their team over, the, you know, this past season and just, I don't know, you, you – I wouldn't say I'm, like, rooting for them. It's all, it was more just, like, can they get into the, you know, the final four? Like, can they kind of, like, keep the intensity up to, like, you know, find their way in there and – I mean, I just, I'm just so impressed with what that defense did against Bama um, yes. to where I'm like, why would I not want, you know, four-year start, three, four-year starter, was on that type of defense, you know, was able to play, you know, with one of the best teams in the country, pretty tough. He's more kind of like your, you, you know, he can put a hand in the ground, he can stand up. I think just nowadays, like you, you know, the NFL, you kind of want like multiple, like big, long, you know, rangy type defenders that can, maybe getting cut going coverage for you a little bit, blitz, you know, come off the edge, you know, just you know, play the run. Yeah, you so can't play like, one-trick pony no more. You can't be a uh, – right. you know, one of my favorite players um, historically like um, Sean Lights out Merriman. You know, you can't do that. You can't be – you pay That's me, you don't get the quarterback. You know what I mean? You get that, those right. positions are kind of 
um, dying off. You have to be versatile, or they're going right. to all the things are getting too good. They'll find a way to expose you. Right. Um, yeah. So I yeah, yeah I agree with that. And yeah. I I was impressed with that team as well. Um, the Cincinnati team. I mean they they beat most teams handily this year. Um, mm-hmm. Played Alabama tough. Um, they got one of the best cornerbacks coming out of the draft. So I think you know I think uh, they they show that they're legit. Um, yes. so I, I wouldn't be too afraid of drafting some of those players. Um, I almost threw their quarterback on the list. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah. So he was, yeah. he was, he almost made the cut, but not quite. Uh, so, um, but I say all that to say I wouldn't be shocked if he wasn't solid also. Yeah. yeah. Only thing with Ritter is like, I mean, obviously he'd be younger than golf, but like, and I could be totally wrong with like my evaluation of him. Like he reminds me of like a Mariota and like, but then when I kind of like look at him, I'm just like, how much more better is he than golf? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, what, like, and not like a, a knock on him. I just, like, you with Willis, you see, like, the incredible athleticism. You know what I'm saying? And just. No, no, I agree. Um, <laughs> did you do the 66 yet? Uh, not yet. But I, mean, oh, yeah. cool. no, so I don't want I didn't want to get off too far off the beaten path. Uh, You're good. No, so um, I agree with you on that. I guess I would say, um, I don't know, it's just. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not big on touching any of these quarterbacks. Uh, right. I don't know. I guess if I had to bet on one, I th- I bet you, I feel like, I don't know why. I feel like Sam Howell's probably, the, not Sam Howell. Sure. Uh, Matt oh. Corral is probably the best quarterback of the list. Um, right, both of those guys. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I don't know. I kind of, if I had to say, I probably would put my money on uh, Sam, uh, Matt Corral being the most legit of all of these guys. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, it's such, such a, I don't know if any of these guys last year we are even being talked about as first round picks, you know? Right. Um, and I think that's something you have to, you have to measure up as far as are we moving them to the top because of the class they're in or are they worthy of it? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah. And I think, um, I, I mean, I agree with all that. I just feel like, you know, as bad as, as bad as we kind of want to just see a new guy under center. It's one of the things where it's like, you know, I'm, I'm feeling okay with seeing golf for, you know, another year. And then it's like, let's look at maybe the Bryce Youngs and the C.J. Strouds and any yeah, other. They they're, they seem much more legit, especially if you build this lineup. You go get a, a, a Christian Watson. You go get a whoever. And then and then you bring in these quarterbacks. Then you got something. I agree yeah. with you. Yeah, but you never know, man. I mean, I feel like, you know, I think one thing we always used to talk about was, like, trying to grab. I mean, it might be two of two's time I'd be up in Miami. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, I wouldn't be too opposed to, like, getting a one-year guy or something like that instead of taking, you know, a shot on the quarterback overall. But, I mean, we'll, you know, that's for, like, that's just how I feel about drafts, and, and you know, overall. So, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to go and jump in, you know, jump back into my 66 uh, pick and who I think they could kind of take a peek at. Um, so, another guy, uh, his name is Nick Benito. He went to OU. Um, you know, playing in the Big 12, I mean, it's shootouts every week. You know, I'd say that they probably mirror, like, what the NFL kind of looks like. The, like, they probably see – what the NFL looks like more than like any other school, like, you know, in the yeah. country. Like, I feel like the Pac-12 or the, the Big 12. Is image or um, yeah. mean, NFL the most. Yeah. Right. Yep. Just, you know, four or five wide. Um, I mean, he's a, you know, edge guy, four-year guy. Um, yeah. Oklahoma always has like, the defense is always kind of like above average, but always have one like stud that is just like, all right, like, we're probably not going to want really anybody else on that team, but we'll definitely take like, you know, this guy that's been raising the most havoc. And I've, you know, watch a few games and always kind of see him in the mix, um, you know, from a defensive standpoint. And then um, <clears throat> my uh, other person that I would, you know, maybe just want to take, take a flyer on um, there would be uh, Dave, David Bell. Um, he's a receiver from Purdue. Yeah. Um, he went nuts against MSU. Um, you know, I, you know, Big Ten guy. You know, I'm always going to be, you know, big fan of Big Ten guys, root for Big Ten guys. And I just think, like, once again, it's going back to like just you know getting that seat warm and just making that seat as comfortable as possible. You know, for whoever is going to be that you know next quarterback, whether that's a rookie or just like a you know somebody that they trade for um, down the road. And I feel like you know you can um, whether you know St. Brown, him, Shark, like Chris Watson, two out of three of those gonna hit. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm confident that somebody you know let's just but let's just get like some big bodies in there and just give like our you know give golf a fighting chance or like give whoever new quarterback next year is you know a fighting chance on offense to where like give them like some actual bodies to throw to um so yeah those are my three at, at that 66 pick 
um, that I think would be, you know, uh, just good players to look at. Um, so, yeah, I know we were going to talk a little bit about just a few sleepers, kind of wrap things up. So who do you think would be uh, some players you kind of like them to, you know, I, I wouldn't even say maybe, maybe even for the Lions, the people that you just think, you know what I'm saying? These, yeah, I wouldn't say – I mean, I, uh, I'll check my GM hat off. These are just guys that I think are going to be – third, fourth, fifth round picks that are going to be, um, I don't want to, uh, stars, high, uh, high producers within in the NFL. Um, in no particular order, I kind of just rattle them off. Um, from Iowa State, his name is Charlie Kohler. Uh, he's a 6'6", 270-pound yeah. tight end. Yep. Um, he had 62 catches, 750 yards, six, um, six touchdowns. Um, I watched his highlight tape. For some reason, in both football and or in basketball in particular, I tend to watch Iowa State a lot. Um, so uh, they're a school that, for some reason, when they're on, I happen to catch and throw them on. Um, I happen to always watch them play Texas. I watch them play whoever, you know, Oklahoma. I, you know, yeah. those are teams that I, I happen to watch them a decent amount. Uh, secondary, uh, wait, uh, second pick in this one would be uh, Kirby Joseph from Illinois. Uh, he's a safety. Watched him play um, a handful of times versus Michigan. Watched him play a handful of times just throughout. Um, I think that's just a solid Big Ten cor- uh, safety. Yeah. Um, somebody I wouldn't be shocked if they're you know making a, uh, making a name for themselves in the NFL. Um, I had Christian Watson on here, and then uh, we don't got to talk about him again. And then lastly, I had uh, Deshaun Haskins uh, or Deshaun Haskins um, uh, from Michigan. Well, yes. Yeah. So I think. I mean. We we know we've seen we've seen him probably every yeah. game near every carry he's had in, in uh, at Michigan. Uh, yeah. he's, he's the truth. I think he's, he's going to make a name for himself in the NFL. Uh, whoever takes him, that's their starting running back in a couple of years. I'll be willing to bet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, you know, I'll start right where you finished. And I had Hassan Haskins. I you know I felt a little disrespected. They had like the top ten best running backs that they thought were in this draft, and he wasn't one of them. But then they even had the nerve to throw some guy from like BYU in front of them. I just feel like he might – I think – I mean, I, I would say you want some of like the top two performances in college uh, football from the running back perspective. It's probably, unfortunately, Kenneth Walker going off for, you know, whatever he did against Michigan. Mm-hmm. And then I would say it's after that or along with that, it was Hassan Haskins beating, you know, a rival for the first time in a long time and also, you know, scoring five touchdowns, 150, 180 yards. So that's somebody that I'm like, like you said, whoever, whoever decides to grab him, I guarantee you put him in on third and two, third and three, fourth and one, fourth and two, he's going to get you a first down. That's literally all he did, like, for Michigan on top of just being like that bell cow and really, really took over when Blake Corum went down. So that's uh, definitely one of my sleepers. I feel like he'll be literally right in that three, four, fifth round range. Yep. So I'll take a shot on him and fall in love with him. Um, my second sleeper, his name is Damon Clark. Um, he went to LSU. Um, he was our leading tackler. You know, I'm a big, you know, pretty big LSU fan. Um, you know, and they're always, they're known just like, they're like, you know, the Bamas and the Clemsons of the world. They're always going to be pumping out a whole bunch of talent. Um, you know, they got, like, I mean, I think, you know, the why that, you know, a guy like him isn't even higher. He's a little undersized. Um, and the LSU wasn't really that great this year. Yep. But just a tackling machine. And I feel like, you know. He a backer? He a linebacker? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. So he just tackling machine. Um, can cover ground, you know, very well. Um, I don't, you know, wasn't really crazy about what I read as far as like him in, in the past, you know, covering the past. But like, I just like you said, it's one of these guys you can just take a flyer on him. You know, at worst, you know, he'll be like one of them first, second down type guys that just stuffs the run, probably develop him to be a little bit better in the past. Um, but yeah, and then my last guy, his name is uh, Justin Ross. He was a receiver at Clemson. Yeah, and he was. Yeah. He was talking about being, like, top 15, top 20, you know, before he came out, but he had a pretty uh, bad, like, neck injury. And, you know, he was able to get cleared and you know, every, got everything squared out, missed the full season. And like you said, this is one of them guys where it's, like, if it's fourth round, fifth round, you just want to take a stab. You know, he you know he played with uh, Trevor Lawrence. You know, he's played in a great program for, you know, three or four years. I wouldn't be, you know, whoever, you know, you grab him, that might be a potential – you know, guy that could make a, you know, very quick and early impact, big guy, um, one of the more like them jump ball, like red zone type frame yeah. um, individuals, I think could make a, you know, make a little bit of a splash. No, oh, that's a good one. So I know, I know of him very, uh, very well. He definitely stood out to me when I watched him play. Um, yeah. And somebody like him, obviously a neck injury is scary. Um, 
Uh, but on top of that, your production is going to go down when you lose a Trevor Lawrence. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Or we, and, and everybody else. Uh, they lost um, Travis Etienne. And, I mean, you know, when all that stuff happens, you're now the, the, the spotlight guy. And you're coming off a major injury and all this. So I, I'm entirely – Imagine him to have a bounce back year or not. Um, shut up, Saint. <laughs> yeah, my bad. That was yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> I, was, I was like, you had to say something eventually. I knew it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think uh, with Ross, like I said, it's you know you definitely want to get all the medical information and really do your homework. And obviously, like it's the game of football, so might get hit the wrong way, and you never know what could happen. But I feel like. He was cleared in college to come back and play, you know, another season. Um, you know, why not take a chance on him? And, uh, yeah, like I said, he definitely has the talent, and it was there because they were looking at him as being a first-rounder at some point in time. So he might be able to get a former former potential first-rounder in the third or fourth round. It, you know, it could be a, a great steal for any franchise. No, for sure. And I think, I think um, we've named a lot of good players. I think most of the players we've named today are – very good players, not not players yeah. that won't miss or, you know, aren't going to be like, damn, why the hell we draft him? Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and I think this is the type of safer, um, guaranteed starters, guaranteed production players that you need to go as far as our early draft picks. And as far as these guys, same. Yeah. As far as these ones, um, I think it's worth the flyer. You know, I think you go yeah. safe early on, and then you try to roll the dice, swing for the, uh, you know, throw the Hail Mary uh, yeah. later on. And, um, and you can afford to do that if you're hitting – with your safe picks early on, you can afford to roll the dice on a guy that yeah. could be OBJ or he could be out of the league in a year. You know, I think mm-hmm. those are um, it's calculated risks. That's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to, like, you know, kind of see we're both on the same page as far as just, like, it's like – up the defense. Defense. You want to toy with offense. You probably should toy a little bit with, you know, receivers, that, that uh, 34th pick. And after that, it's kind of really just like, all right, best available, you know, and then we both kind of agree as well, just with that second pick. I'd like to, you know, maybe see that they could trade it. Kind of wish they would have already traded it. But, you know, this is also, you know, I've also heard this is one of them drafts where Jacksonville, you know, nobody really knows what anybody's doing. Jacksonville doesn't know what they're doing. No, so I'm just, you know, if we don't trade it, I'm just going to say a prayer that somehow Hutchinson doesn't end up getting drafted first overall and he lands with us. I think that's the best case. Scenario. No, I agree with that. That's the best case. If we're forced to pick, Hutchinson, I wouldn't even, you know, I would be, I'd be overjoyed actually. Yeah. Um, throwing the pitch out at the Tigers game. Maybe that's writing on the wall there. Uh, maybe they know something we don't know. Um, you know, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't down in Florida throwing a pitch at the Marlins game. So, uh, right. yeah. No, yeah. I agree. yeah. Just a week away, less than, or a little, uh, eight days away. Um, and then yeah. we'll have, uh, you know, we'll have new look Lions on, on our hands here. Yeah. Like I said, you know, it's fun and games to kind of play around with this, you know, pretty much from the end of the season up until now. And, just got to sit back and hope that they, you know, they don't get a tight end or something. Just do something out of, you know, just off the wall that they've done in the past. So, no, this is where, this is where champ, you want to be a champion. Um, you want to even make the, let's start with playoffs. You want to make the playoffs, yeah. this is where it starts. Um, in the division? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you to the peoples? Yeah. That's all I got. Um, go Lions. You know, hopefully we get some good news next week. Yes, sir. Go Lions. We'll be back at you next week.